Welcome to Marcus Books Presents Online. Today, Dr. Brenda Wade and company touch on the subject of black love. Dr. Wade is a well-known clinical psychologist who specializes in couples and family therapy. She's written several books on the topic of love relations, including love lessons, power choices, and what mama couldn't tell you about love. She's joined by her husband, the noted global network business consultant, Gerald Harris. Their guests today are psychology professor at San Francisco State University, Dr. Kevin Washington, and his wife, professor of law, Deliso Alfred Washington Esquire, authors of the new book, The Resurrection of Black Love. This program is brought to you by Marcus Books, the nation's oldest independently owned black bookstore. Books by and about black people, liberating thought everywhere. And now, Dr. Brenda Wade. I love it. Well, first, let me say I'm delighted to be here. To talk about black love is like a dream come true for me. One of the things that I stand for, and I've taken a stand, that we will cut the divorce rate in our community in half and increase the rate of healthy relationships by 50% within the next five years. And I want everybody to sign on to my dream with me. Because we, we need strong connections in our community. We really need them. So I was thrilled to read The Resurrection of Black Love. And Dr. Kevin Washington has kicked us off and it was a pleasure to read your bio and your beautiful wife, Deliso. Yes. Got it right? Deliso, because I'm going to get everybody's name right. Mm -hmm. And one of the questions we had, this is my husband, Gerald Harris, and we were talking about your book on the way over tonight, and we said, I wonder how they met. <laughs> Did they meet when they were both Fulbrights? Did they meet back home? Did they meet here? So I just got the story from Deliso that you're both from Shreveport, Louisiana, and my family's from New Orleans, Louisiana. Right. So I've got a connection that's here. There's right. a connection. Yeah, and Gerald's here by way of Chicago and Atlanta. So we're bringing the Midwest, the South, the West together, and I think that's important because that's part of our journey yes. as African Americans is that we have traveled coming not just across that middle passage that has so much to do with black love, but the way that we've had our own passage around the United States. So all of that I think is important to know about the people who are here because I think tonight we're gonna to take a little journey together. And we have beautiful people in the audience and I'm gonna save time, make sure that we save time for your questions. So any questions you have, please don't hold back, feel free to offer your questions because it's in a dialogue that we all learn, we all grow, and we're here to learn and grow as much as we are to share our thoughts and what we've been reflecting on about relationships. So let me ask each person a question, if that's okay. <laughs> I'd like to know from you, Kevin, and, and I'm very informal, that's okay, just call me Brenda. I'd like to know from you, Kevin, and Deliso, and Gerald, what is the most important thing about black love that you can think of right now, the most important thing? If I could put it into one word for me, spirit and spirituality. Mm -hmm. Because I think that, we, that when we connect through spirit and not through material, then it changes the dynamics of the relationship. Mm -hmm. And so spirit and spirituality. That's the one thing. Oh, I'm just going to breathe that in. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Love that. And when I think of black love, I think of a reverence to our ancestors. Mm -hmm. um, I think that it's just tremendously respectful to revere them by living and loving. Mm -hmm. And so when I think of black love, I think that whatever we go through, Currently, it is um, a way of saying thank you to the ancestors for what they've been through. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. uh, the word that comes to mind for me is um, transformation. Mm -hmm. um, because uh, your love has to be a part of your own personal growth and personal transformation. Your relationship is important because it allows another person to grow with you, to reflect back to you. 
So you're not alone learning about yourself, learning about life by yourself. And that growth process, that transformation, I think is core to any loving relationship, that both people are growing and helping, helping each other grow together. That's why I married Gerald. Because <laughs> I would say transformation in a heartbeat. Because I, I actually think of black love as a place for us to grow and have the energy to do it. Yes. Yes. And we really have that energy available to us. So with that, I really want to ask a couple of questions. And Gerald has questions because we were talking about your book this evening. We have a long list of questions we're not going to try to get to all of them. But one of the first things we want to know is why you decided to write The Resurrection of Black Love. And then on the heels of that, the question, first question that I know you came up with was, what do you mean when you say resurrection? What does that mean? So maybe that's two questions? I don't know. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. The um, resurrection of black love comes from the research that we were doing in part around the, the so-called slave narratives. And we were researching this at the same time that we had some, some of our uh, age group uh, uh, friends having marital challenges. And what we noticed is that as they talked about the challenges, and we read the slave narratives and we saw that they were able to find ways to establish relationships and maintain relationships and then, and then try to seek to find loved ones that were lost during the enslavement experience. You say that, what is it about that time that we're not able to figure out how to love each other in this time? And so from that, we began to develop these, uh, uh, the black love groups. groups. Yeah, right, evening, evening discussions where we have, where we have uh, uh, dinners at, at a particular restaurant and invite couples to come out, people, not just not just, just couples, and we would talk about the spirituality of sexuality. We would talk about uh, friends before lovers, and so we had a host of topics. And we had from anywhere from 20 to close to 100 people uh, together uh, discussing, having dinner, and then afterwards there would be a, li that, a live band with, 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 with performing, and they could then be on a date with one another, because sometimes couples don't get a chance to date each other because of dealing with, with, with children. So the resurrection of black love comes out of that, that, that the research and the personal experiences. Mm -hmm. I think an integral part of our uh, groups when we allowed people to come together was that we separated the men and the women. And mm -hmm. we asked questions, and basically the same questions, and then we brought everyone together, and the men were surprised about the responses to certain questions, the women were surprised mm -hmm. about their responses from the men, mm -hmm. and then we talked about it together. And, and it, it opened up a dialogue mm -hmm. to determine that men and women may think differently, but once we come together, we can understand why. Yes. And what's the reasoning behind it? So uh, we had a great exchange, and then afterwards we would have dinner. But it was it was almost forced conversation because uh, oftentimes um, people don't want to talk about real issues. Uh, they may talk to one friend, uh, but that friend may not be the best person to get the information exactly. that you need. Exactly, because they don't know any more than you might know if yes. you're struggling with something. But yes. that's a good point you raise about how hard it is for us to talk about what's real. Mm -hmm. I know I heard somebody once say that people are less likely to talk about money mm -hmm. and sex mm -hmm. than anything else mm -hmm. because those things are considered very personal and private, but if we don't talk about them, we can't learn and grow. Right. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. I know you had some more questions. Well, one thing from looking through the book that came to mind for me is um, the specific role that the black man should play in a relationship and the specific role the black woman should play because there's so many changes going on in our society and it's kind of hard to sort of anchor down now because things are changing so fast and we've gone through the sort of, you know, the, the, the sexual revolution, we've gone through the, the feminist revolution and, and certainly all those things impacted us and it appears now that we may be confused about roles, about how we fit in, so any comment you want to give on, on that, so. We're, we're the anchors for the roles we want to play in our relationship. 